Hello class, welcome to the third part of the presentation on air trains and in this part we will try to solve some more problems on epicyclic air trains. Now this is the problem as shown in figure. An epicyclic air train consists of three gears A, B and C as shown in figure 1. The gear A has 72 internal teeth. A is having 72 internal teeth and gear C has 32 external teeth. The gear B meshes with both A and C and is carried on an arm EF which rotates about center of A <coughs> here at 18 rpm. If the gear A is fixed, what is the, uh, determine the speed of gear B and C? Now the other thing is number of teeth on gear A 72 internal teeth and number of teeth on gear C is 32 external teeth and speed of the arm EF is 18 rpm. Now with this given information let us try to solve the problem. Now we will use the tabular method. So these are the given things and this is the epicyclic gear train. Now as usual as a first step, remember first step is very very important step and if you write the first step correctly then in remaining steps you don't have any problems. First step is very very important. So pay attention. Now as usual arm EF is a bit fixed. Hence its speed is will be 0 and will give 1 revolution to gear C in the anti-clockwise direction. We will rotate this gear C by 1 revolution in the anti-clockwise direction. Hence the speed of gear C is plus 1. Now what is the speed of gear B? It is minus TC by TB. So you write the ratio between NB, uh, NC and NB which is equal to TB by TC and NC is 1 revolution. So hence you will get uh, this NB as TC by TB. Okay. So because this uh, gear B is rotating in the clockwise direction that is why minus. Again coming to gear A, this is uh, the speed of gear A minus TC by TA. Now take the ratio of speed between C and B and C by NB and similarly speed ratio between B and A, NB by NA which is equal to TB by TC into TA by TB but NC is 1, substitute 1 here. So here TV, TV cancel, TA by TC here. So NA equal to TC by TA. It is minus because the gear A rotates in the clockwise direction. Now second step is again keep the fig arm EF fixed. Instead of giving plus 1 revolution, give plus x revolutions to gear C. And the speed of gear B becomes minus x times TC by TB. And similarly, the speed of the gear A becomes minus x times TC by TA. Third step, which is common in almost all problems, adding y revolutions to all these elements, hence the total motion of RBF becomes 0 plus y, y, x plus y, x plus y, plus y minus x, TC by TB, plus y minus x into TC by TA. So once this is over, we will move on and uh, try to find out the speed of the gear C when the gear A is fixed. We know that the speed of the RVF is 18 RPM, so hence y equal to 18. Now also this NEF, that means R speed, which is equal to y 18 RPM. Now when gear A is fixed, NA equal to 0. So Picking this speed of the gear A, you get y minus x into tc by t equal to 0, hence x equal to 40.5. So, hence the speed of the gear C, which is x plus y, becomes 40.5 plus 18, that is 58.5 rpm in the sense of rotation of the R. Now, second part of the problem the speed of the gear B when the gear A is fixed. Now here, uh, we don't know the number of teeth on gear B. So hence it is necessary to find the number of teeth on gear B. And the method is very simple. 
let us assume that the da db dc are the pixels for diameters of the gear a b and c and from this geometry we can write the diameter of the gear b plus the radius of gear c it is nothing but dc by 2 equal to radius of gear a radius of gear a is nothing but da by 2 so hence by rearranging this you will get 2 db plus dc equal to da we know that the number of teeth are proportional to their pitch circle diameters. Therefore, this equation can be written in terms of number of teeth directly. So, hence this equation becomes 2 dB plus, sorry, 2 TB plus TC equal to TA. Now, TC we know it is 32, hence number of teeth on here B is 20. So, TA is 72, TC is 32, hence TB is 20. By substituting this, the speed of the gear B becomes minus 46.8 rpm. Now this is another problem as shown in figure. An epicyclic train of gears is arranged as shown in figure 2. How many revolutions does the R this R to which the pinions P and C are attached? P and C are attached to this R make when A makes one revolution clockwise and D makes half revolution in the anti-clockwise. This makes half revolution in the anti-clockwise direction. First part. Second part. When A makes one revolution clockwise and D is just D is fixed. So given things are the number of teeth on gears A and D are 40 and 90 respectively. Now let us uh, start, uh, solve this problem by using the tabular method. And before that, let us determine the number of teeth on gear B and gear C. Again from this geometry, we can write the diameter of the gear uh, A plus diameter of gear B plus diameter of gear C equal to diameter of gear D. DA plus DB plus DC equal to DD. So as B and C are of equal size, hence db equal to dc, hence da plus 2db equal to dd. So, since the number of teeth are proportional to their pitch circle diameter, and the same equation can be written in terms of number of teeth. So, this equation becomes da plus 2db equal to dd. t is 40, td is 90, hence db equal to 20, 25 number of teeth. Similarly, tc is same size as that of the gear b, Hence, gear C will also have 25 number of teeth. So, again, this uh, with this information, we will proceed and solve the problem by using the tabular method. Now, this arm, as usual, will be fixed. Gear A will be given one revolution in the clockwise direction. So, minus 1. And the speed of compound gear BC. B and C are noted on this chart. So, compound gear B C. So, now the speed of uh, the gear B or gear C can be calculated this way. Take the ratio of speed of gear A and B which is equal to T B by T A as N A equal to minus 1 here. So, substitute that here. So, N B will be equal to T A by T B. So, T A by T B is plus sign C. C B or C which rotates in the counterclockwise direction. Now, A is rotating in the clockwise direction. B is meshing with the A. So, it will rotate in the counterclockwise direction. B is positive. D is having internal teeth. Hence, D will also rotate in the clockwise direction. That is what is obtained here. Okay. So, now, to get this uh, speed of gear D, you can write this ratio. Ratio between NA and NB and similarly ratio between B and D, which is equal to TB by TA into TD by TB, NA equal to minus 1. So, TD, ND equal to TA by TD. So, this gear D rotates in the counterclockwise direction because it is having internal teeth. Now, instead of giving minus 1 revolution to gear A, give minus x revolutions and 
this speed of gear BC and gear D will be modified like this and then add minus Y revolutions to all okay, all the uh, elements whether it is plus here similarly here plus or minus it is up to then the total motion of the each of the element will be will be this now let us find out the speed of the arm A when A makes one revolution in the clockwise direction and D makes half revolution in the anti-clockwise direction. So now we have to determine the speed of the arm when A makes plus one revolution, okay, uh, sorry, one revolution in the clockwise direction and gear D makes half revolution in the anti-clockwise direction. Since the gear A makes one revolution clockwise, therefore from the fourth row of the table, minus X minus y speed of gear a equal to minus 1 n a equal to minus 1 or x plus y equal to 1 also the gear d makes half revolution anti-clockwise therefore gear d you take this equation so x into t a by t d minus y equal to half so the value of x becomes 1.125 so from 1 and 2 you get x equal to 1.04 and y equal to minus 0 0.04. So for this condition, the speed of the arm is 0 0.04. Now, speed of the arm for the second condition, when A makes plus 1 revolution clockwise and D is fixed. So as usual, this is the equation from the table. So when gear D is stationary, this equation becomes 0. So here, N D equal to this. So hence, D becomes 0 and the value of X to get as 0 0.692 and Y as 0 0.308 after solving these two set of equations. So hence, the speed of the R is Y is 3.08 in the clockwise direction. So that is the end of the part 3 students. Thank you so much for your attention.